from the get-go, I love the concept of, of, of this story. What did you think when you heard about it? Well, I, instantly I was in, but I didn't get into it through the concept. I just, Jason Blum reached out and was like, I think we might have our next thing to do with you. And I was already like basically signed on at that point just because I love Jason and working with Blumhouse went very well the first time. It was such an amazing experience with Get Out. So I was predisposed to be into the idea. And then I just went into the script cold. I just opened it and started reading without reading the description or anything. Um, and so it's not like I came concept first, although I now know that the concept came from James Wan and Akilah Cooper who wrote the screenplay. Um, just a doll that has been animated by AI. Um, so that was my in, was just reading the script cold, uh, knowing vaguely who was going to be involved. And then the script was like such a page turn, I couldn't put it down. Um, and then I loved the character of Gemma. I loved the story. I loved the questions it was asking. I loved the world it put us in, just, just adjacent to ours, just close enough that it brings up some really uncomfortable questions, things to talk about, and creates horror in this uncanny way that I love. Um, this twisted sense of humor, all of it. Then I spoke to Gerard and I realized that he has this very specific, very unique sense of humor um, that would lend itself beautifully to the subject matter. And it just felt like this stew that was brewing and perfect and I just wanted to be a part of it. And also it must be so special to be working with two giants of the Huge. genre like James Wan and Jason Blum, right? Huge. To be part of something where they're teaming up is like, I mean, it's everything. It just felt like, okay, let's do this, but let's like make sure, not that anyone ever sets out to make a mediocre movie, but we really were like, we've got to get it right because it's, it's got, you know, James and Jason's names on it. This is royalty. You're right. Let's talk a little bit about Gemma. What a great character. She's a brilliant scientist, okay? Yeah. Really dedicated to her work, um, but something happens that really is going to throw a wrench into her life. Yes which is that she becomes the guardian for her niece. Um, so she loses a sister and a brother-in-law and simultaneously gains um, a dependent at the same time in a moment in her career when she is stuck working on something she's lost passion for, desperate to work on the thing that she has a ton of passion for, believes in so much. Um, and also in a moment in life where she probably, in conversations with her friends when the subject of kids comes up, I'm guessing she's the kind of person, like most of my friends, who say, yeah, maybe someday, but I'm focusing on my job, and that's what I want to focus on right now, but I don't know, maybe if I meet the right person, but I don't really, I'm not into kids, you know, whatever their answer is. It felt, she just felt really relatable to me. I felt like I knew her 100%. And so it was uh, very appealing to me, the idea of playing someone who we meet super invested in her work, a little bit annoyed that she's doing that work in the form of a corporate company, wishing that she could just do what she wants to do and just have funding to do what she's passionate about. Um, and then all of a sudden in the middle of it, um, she has this horrible thing happen to her and she improvises by deploying something that she does understand in the face of something she doesn't by um, throwing a Megan at the problem, so to speak. <laughs> So what are the, speaking of the problem, what are the challenges that she has in her relationship with her niece, Katie? Well, I think she just doesn't know Katie that well. I think she sees her occasionally, but no amount of casually knowing a kid is going to prepare you for full time taking custody of them and taking care of them. Plus, in theory, her biggest role right now should just be to be there for whatever Katie's experiencing because she's, she's just experienced the worst loss a child can experience and... Gemma just doesn't have those tools, which I think most of us would be totally intimidated and unable to meet that moment. It's such a huge thing to try to walk a child through that it she doesn't know where to start and she kind of can't. She she's just sort of at a at a loss. Um, and so making sure that that felt that she didn't feel like evil in her inability to do that, but instead of relatable in her inability to do it was really important because if she felt ill-intended or anything like that, you lose the audience for the whole movie. It needs to feel like she could be good at this, but she just doesn't know how to do it. She just doesn't have the right words. She doesn't know how to talk to a kid. She doesn't want her to touch any of her toys, which are collector's items in her mind, but toys in the kid's mind. She doesn't know how to tell her kid that she has to go do work. She starts telling her about what's going on at the office and Katie's just eating toast. She doesn't care. She, you know. All of those moments, I'm hoping, will feel really familiar to audience members. But in the moment when you're watching the movie, you're thinking, oh, come on, Gemma, just, just give her a hug. Just, just tell her you're here. Tell her to talk. How are you feeling? You know, And she just doesn't know how to do that yet.
But what she does know how to do is create robots and toys. So what yes. happens when she creates Megan? So uh, she has been creating Megan for years, and Megan experiences a very unfortunate malfunction. But when she's having a conversation with Katie, she gets this idea that she, Megan would be worthwhile in a situation like Katie's because she might be able to exist as the ideal companion and the, the last toy she'll ever need, basically. And so when she introduces Katie to Megan, it is love at first sight. It is Katie immediately is like, this is what I need. This is my person, and just gives her all her attention to the doll, which then temporarily at least Gemma finds to be a huge relief. She feels like she has a partner in taking care of this kid, and also she can keep working on Megan so that they can progress it through the stages of, of her work. Um, that's not great, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, we will come to kind of wish that she didn't introduce Katie and Megan, but she does. Well, because um, she creates uh, Megan to protect Katie, but that kind yeah. of backfires. Sure does. Yeah, she protects her. To, she creates her to protect her, but also she just creates her to bond with her. The protection is kind of like a, a, a something she doesn't take as seriously as she should when she, you know, protect her from harm, physical and emotional. Those words come out of her mouth in a really intense moment, but they are directions given to Megan, and we get to see the result of those directions as the movie plays out. Speaking of Katie, I mean, I thought Violet was brilliant in she's that role. She's so good. What can you say about her? I just love her. She is so smart. She's so talented. She's so experienced. She's sweet. She's professional. She's kind of got it all. I was, like, very intimidated because Haunting of Hill House I absolutely loved, and I thought she was so good in that series. And I was like, she's way more experienced than I am <laughs> going to set. She's got this wry sense of humor. She's very dark, and I just i am crazy about her. I really like her. Of sense of humor, I thought Ronnie Chang brought some humor into. So, I mean, is there a funnier person alive? He's such a blast, and I thought he was so so great as David. Also, how was it for you to actually act opposite Megan? Well, without going into like the logistics of how Megan is portrayed, um, because I think it's more fun to just think of her as Megan. It was challenging to act opposite her, and it required help from every single department. It was one of those things to achieve in a movie where everyone has to be working together, rowing in the same direction. Um, from a performance standpoint, it was at times super helpful and at times very hard. <laughs> um, that depended on what Megan was doing. Um, a unique experience. My trickiest co-star by far, so far. By the way, you're playing a robotics engineer, a genius, basically. Yeah. How did you prepare that? Um, I'm a genius. No, I'm kidding. Um, I interviewed, I interviewed a lot of people in AI, in robotics, engineers, etc. I my brain does not work like that. There's a part of my genetic family that is really good at math and engineering and inventing, and I sadly did not get that. Um, so I had to just learn as much as I could about it and try to understand what it would feel like to be that smart, to be that brilliant, what it would be like to work in that environment. Um, but that was as close as I could get, unfortunately. Most of the time when I had these conversations, about five minutes in, I just stopped understanding anything they were saying. I was like, okay, explain how these learning models work. And I immediately regretted the question because I was like, "That I'm lost, I'm so lost. Um, but I think that is just having respect for what she did is the first step. And I have a ton of respect for anyone who makes these things. It's incredible. I. I we can't even, unless it's a field that you're into, it's hard to even fathom how much goes into making something like Megan. Um, the The conversations were fascinating. I learned so much about um, the actual programming of AI, the way they learn, all of that, to the way they move and how difficult it would be to actually make something that moves the way Megan does spontaneously and so smoothly. Um, has spontaneous verbal responses and uh, physical responses to things. Um, you know, we're not quite there, but it's not impossible. And how was your collaboration with Gerard, um, who directed the movie? Gerard is amazing. I think the thing about Gerard I admire the most is just his, like, absolute tonal vision for the movie. Um, I'm not sure anyone could have hit the marks that he does, swaying from really dark comedy to camp to drama to tension to horror. I mean, he really hits it all, and yet you still feel like you're in the same movie, which is quite a feat. 
Um, I think that's kind of his superpower. And we worked on it for a long time and we talked and prepped about it for like a year before we filmed it and then we've been working on it now for a while. And the whole time was really just a collaboration of trying to get Gemma to a place that felt real, try to get the story to a place where it all felt consistent, you know, all of that stuff that you do to try to polish it into as, as shiny a diamond as you can before you even film it. And then after the fact, making sure that it feels like it's as strong as it could possibly be. And he was, you know, at the helm of the ship every step of the way. And what was the energy like on set? The energy was, we filmed it fast, really quickly. Um, we were in New Zealand. Um, the energy was very much like, we do not have enough time to make this movie. <laughs> not even close. Uh, we're gonna do our best. And one of the stars of the movie in the form of Megan is very hard to achieve. And we underestimated how difficult it would be to achieve her. And yet we still have the same amount of time to make the movie. So buckle up, let's get it done. Um, that was the attitude. And everyone was such a good sport and was so, so talented and professional. And yeah, it was a full team effort. Definitely one of those. Did you enjoy shooting on location in Canada and New Zealand? Yeah, I did. Yeah, very much so. It was um, it was t uh, 2021 in the summer, and it was still a time as it is now, even on film sets where everyone's masked and you're doing testing. But since we filmed in New Zealand, at that point there wasn't any COVID in New Zealand. So we all, those of us who came in from the US and elsewhere did the two week stay in the isolation hotel. And then once we were through, we were just back in time pre COVID in a normal society filming normally, which none of us had done for a while at that point. And so that part of it felt like such a privilege. Um, and I loved being in New Zealand. I loved, we were in Auckland. It was really nice, even though it was winter. Um, it was beautiful. The people are phenomenal. Yeah, really good experience. Following up on what you were saying before about the term, by the way, I couldn't agree more, how it touched, you know, it on, hits on all these different cylinders. Yeah. <clears throat> I felt also that the film had a bit to say about, you know, our dependence with technology. What do you think? Definitely. I think one of the things the movie asked from the first scene, um, first there's a commercial for the perpetual pet, which is what Gemma is supposed to be working on in her professional life. Um, and it's the premise of the commercial is that this kid is mourning the death of a pet and then their parent offers them a perpetual pet, which is a robotic pet that will never die. And um, one of the lines in the commercial, it's like a pet that will lo live longer than you do, which is such an uncanny concept for a child. Um, so already we see a parent ba putting a Band-Aid over a loss with something that is a robotic uh, toy that will outlive them. And then you go right into the scene of Katie driving with her parents where she's playing with the perpetual pet. And her mom tries to draw her attention to the beautiful snowy mountain. And she's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And then she goes back to playing with it. Um, and it's a recurring theme throughout the movie. I think, um, I mean, this is not a new uh, sentiment, but I think that technology, as long as it's existed, as long as we have been making things as humans, um, they often go very quickly from tools to weapons. And I just think that we're a little behind the eight ball in the conversation about AI. Um, and it's transitioned from tool to weapon. And I think it's just something that we all should talk about very openly uh, as a society and decide how we feel about all of this because it's moving very fast. And what is your relationship with technology like? It's interesting. I feel like a Luddite in some ways. Um, I, I used to be much more like on top of it all. I don't have smart devices. I don't... Um, I try not to like, if I get served an ad in an app, I try to leave the app to go like open, to go to that website in a different place just so that I'm a little more mysterious to the algorithm, I guess. Um, but in some ways I'm totally tethered to it just like everybody else is. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's hard to find someone today who doesn't have a relationship to technology, but I would not say I'm in like the top, like, you know, 10% in terms of Dependence. Um, I'm probably up there, but not all the way. Not like Zoomers. They're amazing. So just to wrap up, how do you look back now at this whole experience of a movie where not only do you star, but you're also an executive producer? 
so fondly and it's not over yet. I see this, um, I see movies as happening and any project is happening really in three acts, the prep, the filming, and then the post. And uh, so we're still in the third act, it's not over yet. Um, I, this is the first time I've been an executive producer and it's been such a joy to be able to be fully invested in it to the extent that I like to be invested in everything I work on. Um, obviously it was a privilege to play Gemma and to be in the movie, but it also just, was so much fun to be like deeply involved in the more granular aspects of getting it made and bringing it to the world. Um, I've learned so much and I really loved that part of it because I care so much. It's nice to be allowed to care that much officially because I have the title. I can I can ask for the emails about you know what props have been cleared and what t-shirt logos are allowed to go in the movie and what locations we're gonna use and all of that stuff. And I like I like the nitty gritty, what can I say?